In the home stretch of the midterm cycle, Republican Arizona Senate nominee Blake Masters joined Kerry Lake on the campaign trail in his effort to unseat incumbent Democratic Senator Mark Kelly. The Trump-backed Masters has consistently pulled a couple points south of Kelly, with Lake consistently edging out her Democratic opponent. In the last days of the campaign, Masters has made several joint appearances with his fellow Republican candidate, hoping to benefit from her political strength. The Arizona Senate race could decide the balance of power in the upper chamber. Should Masters take down Kelly, it is likely Republicans would regain control for the first time in two years. Thank you. Hey, I got a question for you guys. Who's ready to send Mark Kelly back to space tomorrow? Could not be more important. Tell me if you disagree, please, but I think that Mark Kelly is the very worst United States Senator. I mean, who else do you got? There's, I, I, I grant, there's a lot of competition for that title. There's a lot of bad ones. Sometimes people say Elizabeth Warren. She's pretty bad. How about um, Chuck Schumer? Uh, Chuck Schumer just looks the part, doesn't he? He looks like a, he looks like a villain from an Ayn Rand novel. He's, he's, a, he's an evil one. What about um, Bernie Sanders? Ooh, Bernie Sanders. Although I gotta say, Mark Kelly votes just like Bernie Sanders in the US Senate. Not a lot of daylight between those guys. The difference between Bernie and Mark Kelly is at least Bernie Sanders will look you in the eye and tell you what he is. He'll look you, he should be ashamed to admit that he's a far left socialist, but he's not, he'll tell you that's exactly what he is. Well, Mark Kelly votes in lockstep with Bernie Sanders, in lockstep with Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer. So he's just as dangerous to our republic as Bernie Sanders is, except now he's been on your living room television for the last six months pretending to be a center-right Republican. He's lying through his teeth. You see his fake ads, right? He's lying about me, of course. Sorry, it's not gonna work. He's lying about himself. He says, I stand up to Joe Biden. I'm like, really, Mark? When? I must have missed that because I've just seen him rubber stamp the most destructive, most left-wing agenda we've ever seen in American history. Do you ever get the feeling like the Democrats are doing all this to us on purpose? It's this age-old question. I mean, people ask me every day, Blake, are they really just that incompetent? And yeah, they are that incompetent, right? But it's not just incompetence at this point. It's intentional. One of the first things that Joe Biden did when he took office, January 20th of last year, I was sick to my stomach. He canceled the border wall. We the people, the taxpayers had already built most of that wall. We'd paid for all the steel. Why did Biden halt construction? Still sit, you can see the piles of steel still sitting there. Well then Biden and Mark Kelly got together and they pushed the most anti-border patrol, most anti-ICE, most anti-law enforcement agenda. They reversed all the successful policies that were working, like remain in Mexico. And here's the thing, I know these guys are incompetent, Joe Biden and Mark Kelly, but I think they're clever enough. I think, maybe I'm giving them too much credit, but I think they're clever enough to know that in the greatest country in the history of the world, when you throw the borders wide open and you invite the whole world to come here, you're gonna create a crisis. They did it on purpose. And they said to every prospective illegal immigrant, hey, come on in. Not only will we not deport you, but here's an incentive. They're, in they're encouraging people to break the law. Here's cash. Here's a cell phone. Here's a bus ticket. I've seen. Busfuls, these white buses, right? NGO buses funded by us, taxpayers. They funnel these illegal aliens to Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport where the Biden administration has been running midnight flights for the better part of 20 months just taking these illegal aliens anywhere in the country they want to go. Except Martha's Vineyard. No! 
no, no, no. Can't go to Martha's Vineyard, right? And the media, they freaked out almost as much as the residents of Martha's Vineyard freaked out, right? You just love the, man, the hypocrisy, champagne socialism, limousine liberalism, right? These people in Martha's Vineyard, they had the lawn signs on their lawn saying, yeah, we're a sanctuary city. Until they got one little taste of what sanctuary cities are like. And they said, ooh, no thanks. They declared a national emergency. They called the National Guard. They couldn't wait to deport those 50 people. And the media. Y'all called Ron DeSantis a human trafficker for sending 50 illegal immigrants one time to Martha's Vineyard. But it's actually Joe Biden and Mark Kelly who have worked hand in hand, more or less, with the Mexican narco-terrorist drug cartel. They're basically business partners at this point, functionally. They've worked hand in hand with the cartel to traffic more than four and a half million human beings into our country illegally in just the past 20 months. If you were trying to destroy a country, one of the first things you do is throw its border wide open. That's what Biden and Mark Kelly have done. And it's not just the people, of course. And the people, by the way, they're victims too. The women and children are horribly brutalized by the cartel. The men are sold into some kind of modern day slavery, indentured servitude. The cartel owned them. It's absolutely tragic. What else is tragic is the fentanyl that's coming in. We don't talk enough about fentanyl. Mark Kelly prefers never to talk about it at all. In fact, he was radio silent for the first 20 months of his Senate term. Only this past Monday, did Mark Kelly wake up and start talking about fentanyl? How disgusting is that? He sat by idly while we lost 100,000 Americans, mostly young people, to this poison. And that's the proper term for it, by the way. It's poison. I've stopped speaking in terms of fentanyl overdoses because the more apt term is poisonings. These are intentional poisonings. We've lost 2,000 people in Arizona, mostly young people. Well, Mark Kelly couldn't be bothered to do anything about it until just a few days before an election. I think he must have been reading his polls. He said, uh-oh, Blake's right on my heels. By the way, we're no longer on his heels. We've caught him and passed him. And shame on Mark Kelly for thinking that he can pull a fast one on us. He introduced last Monday a new piece of legislation, the Stop Fentanyl Act of 2022 or whatever, so that he can get on your TV screen with all his money and say, I've done all I can to stop fentanyl. Too little, too late, Mark. I've suggested that Senator Mark Kelly should have to attend the funerals. When I said that a few weeks ago for the first time, some, some people in the media said, Blake, that's unfair. That's too harsh. Do you feel that's too harsh? I don't think it's harsh enough. Let Mark Kelly look a grieving mother in the eye and explain to her why is the 50th vote, right? Biden needed his vote to accomplish absolutely everything. Mark Kelly had tremendous leverage. Explain to that grieving mother why he couldn't be bothered to lift a finger to stand up for the people of Arizona and actually pressure Biden to deliver border security. I will never forgive him for doing that. That's just one of many reasons why we're gonna fire him tomorrow. Man, these Democrats in charge, they have destroyed our border. They've also destroyed our economy. Don't look at your 401k, yikes. And again, I don't want to suggest that Mark Kelly or Joe Biden could ever competently steward a healthy economy. No, I think they're in over their head. But with this economic policy that we're seeing, man, it is so destructive. It looks pretty intentional, doesn't it? What's the second thing that Biden canceled right after the border wall? The Keystone Pipeline. Why would you do that? Again, they either didn't realize what would happen if you declare war on American energy, you think that might take energy prices up? Obviously, yes, so they're either so dumb that they didn't understand that. In which case, yikes, we gotta throw them out. Or give them some credit, I think they understood perfectly well. When you declare war on oil and gas, in a country that's still mostly powered by oil and gas, yeah, you're gonna take gas from $2 to $6. They don't care. If you give Mark Kelly any more time in office to rubber stamp Joe Biden's demented agenda, soon gas won't just be five or six dollars, it'll be eight, 10, 12 dollars a gallon. 
And then Pete Buttigieg. Is he back from paternity leave? Not sure if he's back in the office yet. But when he gets back, he will look at you and say about $12 gas, good. You should be driving an electric car. That's what they think of us. Here's the problem, gang. When they made energy too expensive, they made everything too expensive. They caused massive inflation. Think about it for a half second. Everything you need to live takes energy to make or to move. So that's fully half the inflation right there. They apparently don't understand this. Mark Kelly's official explanation for inflation, by the way. He says, well, you see what happens is all the greedy corporations get together all the businessmen, and they decide to raise prices at the same time, they're price gouging. It's capitalism's fault. Again, either Mark Kelly is so dull that he believes that, or maybe, or if you were to give him some credit, he's smarter than that, he knows he's peddling a lie. No, it's surrendering our energy independence and it's printing money. They printed $6 trillion in the last 20 months. Mark Kelly may not understand how that causes inflation, but I'll tell you what, my eight-year-old boy understands it perfectly well. When the government prints a trillion dollars, it devalues every dollar in your wallet. It sends energy prices, it sends food prices, prices at the pump, rent, up and up and up. But hey, don't worry about it because the Democrats have a fix. It's the Inflation Reduction Act. <laughs> they called it that, right? So you know it's going to reduce inflation. No, it's the opposite. It's always the opposite with these bills, right? Did Obama's Affordable Health Care Act make your health care affordable? No, it's always the opposite. And now the cherry on top is 87,000 IRS agents. So look, we could sit here all night and talk about all the problems the Democrats have caused.